Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. This is Brad with Being Chill. Today we're going to have a quick video just talking about the iPhone 12 lineup, everything we know about it, all the leaks, rumors, release date, price, color, specs, you name it, we're going to talk about it. But before we get into that, I do want to ask if you're not already to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload new videos just like this every week, Monday through Friday. So if you like this content, there's a good chance you're going to like some of my other videos and I'd love it if you checked them out. Anyways, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about here is going to be the release date. Now, we have had some leaks from a UK cellular service employee who told Mac rumors that we're likely to see an event on October 13th, as well as a tweet from John Prosser, a notorious leaker for Apple products, who has also said that this is going to be happening on October 13th. And if we take a look at some of the trends on the release dates of iPhones, we're going to see that they almost always announce the products on a Tuesday or a Wednesday at an iPhone keynote, and then seven to 10 days later, they're gonna start shipping the devices always on a Friday. So if this October 13th date is correct, and it would make sense, especially with the time of the September 15th Time Flies event being almost exactly a month away, I'd say it's a good chance we're gonna see it happen on October 13th, and that we're gonna see the iPhone 12 lineup start shipping out, starting either on October 16th that Friday, or the following Friday on October 23rd. It's practically confirmed at this point that we're gonna get four new iPhone 12 models at this new keynote event. The first one we're gonna see is gonna be a 5.4 inch iPhone 12 mini. This is expected to start at a price of 649 US dollars, and the storage configuration options are gonna be 64 gigabytes as the base, 128 gigabytes as the mid, and 256 as the largest storage upgrade option. Next, we're gonna have a 6.1 inch screen iPhone 12, and this is gonna start at a price of around 749 US dollars, and it's gonna have the same storage configuration options as the iPhone 12 mini. The next device we're likely to see is gonna be the iPhone 12 Pro. This is expected to start at a price of 999 US dollars, and it shares the same 6.1 inch screen as the iPhone 12. However, this one will have a 128 gigabyte as the base storage option, and it will upgrade to 256 and 512 gigabytes as the biggest option. And last but not least, we do have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is expected to start out at 1,099 US dollars and has a 6.7 inch screen, much bigger than all the other ones and these storage options are the exact same as the iPhone 12 Pro. We are expected to see an updated design on the iPhone 12 models with squared off metal edges on the side and a glass back, very similar to what we used to see on the old iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S models. However, this time we will also see a new color, which is gonna be navy blue, which will be launching alongside the gold, silver, and space gray options. Now it is very likely we're gonna see the navy blue due to the leaks, and the fact that they just released a new Apple Watch that comes in a blue color, which we can expect to match the iPhone. If we take a look at the inside of the device, we do know that they're gonna have an A14 chip, which has already been announced with the iPad Air fourth generation. It uses a new five nanometer manufacturing process, which they claim is going to be 16% faster than their A13 chip that we saw on the iPhone 11. So we will see a nice little performance boost there. However, I don't think it's gonna be anything too spectacular. Now, there was a somewhat unreliable leak earlier that stated that we could see a new B14 chip being implemented in the iPhone 12 mini models. However, I don't really think that's true, and in the past, we've seen Apple keep their processors the same across all devices in the lineup, so I really don't expect it. However, if they do do that, it would likely lower the price below the $649 that is expected, and could even bring it around $500 US dollars to compete with some of the other cheaper smartphone options that might be out there. Now, this would also be in line with Apple changing their structure recently and releasing the Apple Watch SE to catch more customers at a lower price point. All of these phones are gonna support 5G right out of the gate. However, there are rumors that the iPhone 12 Pro Max and maybe even the iPhone 12 Pro are gonna support millimeter wave technology, which should allow for faster speeds in some area when using 5G. However, we have to wait and see what Apple decides to do on that front. We are expected to see OLED screens on every device in the iPhone 12 lineup, whereas in the past they have put LED screens in the cheaper devices in the lineup. However, this time they will all get it. But the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max are expected to have Samsung XDR OLED screens, and the 12 and the 12 mini are just gonna have OLED screens from another manufacturer. Now that's not all bad, but we are gonna still see that notch on the top as well as the lack of 120 hertz is to be expected. We don't know why Apple is choosing not to do it, 
but it seems like that they're gonna wait for the iPhone 13 to implement 120 hertz. Even though we see other cell phone manufacturers pretty much doing this across the board if we look at the Android side of the house. Some more hardware specs that we can expect to see are gonna be four gigabytes of RAM in the 12 mini and the 12, and then we're gonna see six gigabytes of RAM in the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, as well as a dual camera system on the 12 mini and the 12, and a triple camera system with a LiDAR scanner on the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max. One thing people are really upset about with this new iPhone 12 is that it is likely not going to have USB-C charging. However, it is going to include a USB-C to lightning cable in the box, but I really don't know why they're waiting so long to implement USB-C on the iPhone, especially when they've already done it in the iPad models and they have them on the MacBooks. So I really don't have any idea why. We'll just have to wait, I guess, until the iPhone 13 for that. Another important thing to note is they're also not going to include the wall power adapter or ear pods in the box with the iPhone 12. And they claim it's for the environment, but I really think this is just Apple trying to squeeze more money out of people because you can buy them on their website for a very high price. The final thing I wanna mention is that we will very likely see the return of Touch ID on the iPhone 12. They've already made a return on the iPad Air 4th generation by implementing Touch ID inside of the power button on the top of the device. And with the pandemic and everybody wearing masks and face ID just really not working that well right now, this will be a great time for them to bring it back. Now, there are rumors that we are gonna see in-display fingerprint readers coming sometime next year, but I don't think we're gonna see it on the iPhone 12 lineup. They will likely debut that in 2021 on either the iPad Pro 5th generation model or on the iPhone 13. We'll have to wait and see. That's all I've got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click that like button. And once again, I want to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos just like these every week, Monday through Friday. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you get notified every time I make an upload and you can stay up to date on the latest tech news. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.